Remember this video we just did a couple videos ago about the Minis Forum uh, Desk Mini PC? Really shocked and surprised us at how good this actually is. We do have another review coming in the future about the Big Brother coming out for this, but I thought, why not take this opportunity to go ahead and see if we can't add a graphics card to this? Yes, we're gonna add a full-size graphics card to this. With no parts markup and only a $75 build fee, Redux gaming PCs are the obvious choice for gamers who demand the best without paying extra. With as little as a few clicks, you'll get a PC optimized for you and the games you play at a price that fits your budget, and all Redux PCs are backed by a two-year warranty. To see all that Redux has to offer and to start configuring your next PC, head to the link in the description below. So one of the biggest drawbacks to this, now don't get me wrong, this has amazing amount of power in this. The uh, 4800U that's in here is an APU, it's an AMD APU, which is the Ryzen one and a half. Remember there was kind of like a family in between Zen one and Zen two? Well, it has a very powerful APU in it for what it is. We've got more powerful APUs coming out in the future and essentially all this is is a shrunk down laptop that's, you know, just squeezed down into this form factor. But the problem is you can't expand it. You can't just add a graphics card to it. Well, I got an email recently from a guy named JK Software that was like, hey, you know, they make these adapters that you can actually plug into this and it uses M.2 because remember M.2 NVMe standard is just a PCIe. So I went ahead and bought one. It's from China. What could go wrong? I'll put a link to this down below. It's not the cheapest thing. I got two of them actually. There's a 50 centimeter and a 25 centimeter version. And here's what this video is designed to do right now. It's not designed to say, hey, start ripping open your laptops and stuff because if you have an unused NVMe in your laptop, or you decide to move your storage off of NVMe and onto SATA or something like that, then you would be able to also add a big powerful graphics card to your laptop if you no longer want to use the laptop display and your laptop just becomes a really thin tower there sitting there on your desk while you have a full-size monitor hooked up to it. But here's what we get. We get a PCIe, just looks like a standard PCIe right there with supplemental power that runs off of SATA. Because my biggest concern about this is, look, this is basically just, it looks like an NVMe drive, but it's not. It's just a, a, an adapter interface, if you will, that goes from PCIe to NVMe. But my concern when I started talking about this with Phil is, how are they getting power to the PCIe slot? Remember, the PCIe standard says 75 watts through the slot makes its way to the graphics card. Well, they didn't show this part inside the, in the pictures and stuff, nor did they mention supplemental power anywhere in the description. So I took a chance and I ordered two of them anyway, a long one and a short one. In fact, where's the long one? <laughs> Lady. So here's the long one right here. Now you guys might be wondering why these even exist. This is a way for people to actually be, and it kind of sucks because it's derivative of my, uh, cryptocurrency mining. However, if you didn't get a, if you don't have a motherboard that's designed specifically for crypto mining, which just has a crap ton of 4X slots on it so that you could add something like 16 graphics cards to a single motherboard, you can get PCIe adapters that basically go into a PCIe slot. In fact, I got one of those too. It's essentially like this guy right here, which was designed to go into a 4X PCIe and then give us uh, an, M an M.2 or an NVMe slot attached to it. But you get big cards like this that have a ton of these on it and you can put multiples of these in your motherboard and then you get a bunch of these that connect to it and you can get a bunch of graphics cards hooked up to a single motherboard, allowing you to be able to do things like cryptocurrency mining. So the derivative, this is derivative of something that I think as a collective, a lot of us are really upset with, but it's gonna allow us to do some really cool things. So this basically just attaches to the M.2. It gets held down the same way your drive would, and it's got various mounting locations here based on the length of the M.2, wherever your standoff is. Goes to a standard PCIe, which is mountable, so you can mount that down with screws to something. Hey, look, they're not like the uh, NZXT ones. They're actually shielded. Then you take this supplemental power guy, you slot it on there. Now you have a SATA uh, power plug, which will give you your slot power and then your signal carries through this ribbon cable to whatever it is you wanna make a signal to. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna start off with our small little 1050 non-PCIe power, because I wanna see first if the concept works, if we can get an image out of this. You guys are probably like, Jay, these have existed for a long time, you're really like an idiot. And that's true, I, I didn't have a reason to ever research this, but now I have. And I want you guys to consider something as we go forward. I will put a more ex expensive, bigger graphics card on this to see how the CPU holds up. But this is about proof of concept. Doesn't work. If it does, this opens up a lot of opportunity for us when it comes to PC modding. Not yet. Yes, I could have gotten a flexible riser cable 
to do the same thing with a big motherboard. However, if I can have something this small do this kind of work, and I want to say that's what she said so bad, but I won't say that's what she said. But you just said that's what she said. No, that's a fallacy. You said so, it twice. No, I didn't. So what this allows us to do is take a really small system like this and put it pretty much anywhere. You guys have been saying forever, put a PC in a boat, put a PC in a boat, because you all know I like boats. Well, this one might actually allow me to do it. That's what I'm doing as I go through this, is I'm seeing how viable is this for future mods? And is it, is it going to work? We're really fortunate that on this particular system, and yes, I could pull the whole PCB out of here, and the only thing that's taped down in there, honestly, is the Wi-Fi um, antenna, but I'm gonna leave it all in the box for now. But I'm really fortunate that the PCIe faces up like it does, and it's not like on the other side. But what this obviously means is like, well, Jay, you're taking off your storage. Yes, we are making a compromise here because there's only one it means we're going to take this drive and set it aside, which by the way, I don't even think I pointed out in the review. It does have a heat sink on there, which is kind of nice. Because remember, M.2s, if they get too hot, they really slow down. Which means that we're going to then be taking the adapters that come with it, attaching it to a, a SATA SSD, which in my opinion is plenty fast for something like this. You would have a hard time actually noticing the difference between SATA six gigabit per second on an SSD versus an NVMe SSD in this particular scenario. If we had the fastest of the fastest RAM and CPU and all that, then you might notice it. However, in this case, it's not going to be a problem. But I'm taking this out because I want to do a test boot first to make sure that without a drive in there, that it's going to allow us to get to the BIOS and all that sort of stuff because I don't know what's necessarily going to happen when we go to take the main drive out of here. Theoretically, it should, where's my cable? It should just go to the BIOS. But that's why every step along the way right now, we are going to go ahead and just proof of concept this one bit at a time. Okay, so we got a, we got video. So here's what we're gonna do next. We are gonna take this guy. We are going to line it up. Also too, it's very important that you don't double this back and like crease this real tight as much as you might want to because like oh i can fold it up in there and have it right on the edge don't do that that that's just going to damage the cable inside the ribbon cables like that don't like to be folded over 180 um which is why we just got really lucky with the way all of this is oriented so now we are going to take this and you know what i didn't check is whether or not we have any sort of igp igp iGPU control or the APU in there to tell it go to PCIe graphics. Remember, this is basically based off a laptop. So it shouldn't ask you, do you want to use a discrete? Because it doesn't have one hooked up. So that's why we're hooking one up now. Now the downside to all this, we need an external power supply. And that's fine. Um, this little guy, <laughs> this isn't gonna cut it. Nor do we even have a way to hook a graphics card up to it. Remember, it's, it's a USB-C plug. So that's why I'm taking this small SFX power supply and then we're gonna be using a jumper on it, which means I'm gonna have to manually flip the switch on the power supply to give power to the GPU, because remember, it's not getting it through this, it's getting it through this. So we just need a way to turn the power supply on and then a way to give power to this guy. Plug it in, like a Glade. Plug it in, plug it in. There we go. That's good, that's good, that's good. Display port. There we go. And our indicator that it's working is gonna be that the, that the fan starts spinning. Because I don't think the fan will start spinning if I turn on just this. Let me see, that has no power? Okay. So I don't think the fan will start spinning Nope, it doesn't. And the monitor was like, yeah, <laughs> did you see that? Cause it just suddenly was like, oh, wait, there's no signal. But if I plug this back into here and I flip this on right as I hit power, that should spin. There we go, proof of concept. So now we have power going to the GPU through the supplemental. We should now be getting a video out of here, not here, obviously it's not plugged into that. There we go. Okay, so we're up and running. Hardware wise, obviously we don't have any sort of an OS going. Now I'm gonna be taking this tiny little guy right here. This is our uh, 
Samsung one terabyte 860 QVO drive, which are the lesser expensive ones. Now when you turn it off too, you gotta remember to turn off the power supply as well. So it's like, there we go. Now I wanna see if this guy will just boot for us. It does have an OS on there. I don't suspect it actually working very well. And I'm also not gonna just lay that in there because this is a metal case and those are metal traces. So we're gonna be safe and leave it out here like that. Yeah, it's gonna start boot looping. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem like it's able to like resolve the hardware and then it just freaks itself out. Well, we should be able to, yeah, it's just gonna boot loop. So we should be able to uh, just do a fresh Windows install, which is fine, because that drive, it already had a fresh install on it. It's the exact same drive we used when we did the 4770K, eight-year-old PC plays games in 2021 video. Obviously it works though, and that's the first sign. But before we keep going, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and I'm gonna put a bigger graphics card on there with PCIe power just to see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this drive because I will install an OS on there. A little more sensible, 3060 Ti as I almost dropped it. It's an Asus Strix 3060 Ti. <laughs> this is gonna look so stupid. Jesus. Why does a 3060 need to be this big? It's got two eight pins. <laughs> It's a 3060 Ti, what the hell guys? Oh, give me a minute here while I peel this off. Give me a minute while I slip into something more comfortable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even satisfying, it was just like <laughs> and just fell off. Uh. <laughs> Where'd the computer go? It's like twice the volume of the computer. Like literally exactly. <laughs> Where's the computer? Okay, we need to turn this actually. Just like cable management. Everything has to be neat and tidy and orderly. Really? There. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, I forgot RGB. Yay. I should mount the computer to the card. <laughs> you put your graphics card in your computer, but you ever put your card, your computer in your card? <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. So All right, cool. We got video. What do you know? Is there any doubt? It's still doing the recovery thing. Okay, fine. We'll install Windows just because we have nothing to lose on this system here. Um, we'll be back. All right, so we got our drives in here along with our GAM, GAMS drive. And um, yeah, so our 3060 Ti is overclocked as well because we can, why the heck not? Uh, I'm pushing plus 200 on the core, plus 500 on the memory, maxed out power limit, maxed out temp limit, aggressive fan curve. It's such a quiet cooler in here, you can't hear it anyway. It's idling at 27C. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with Doom Eternal. I don't remember what we were getting the last time. I think it was like 45 to 50 FPS, if I remember correctly. And that was with settings like completely down to low and then dynamic super resolution was just like, or dynamic resolution was like upscaling it from like 640 or something like that <laughs> to 1080. We're gonna be playing in, why does the window look weird like that? <laughs> uh, we'll check the resolution and stuff in a minute, but we're gonna be playing at 1440p on this one. Maybe even trying 4K. This is a 4K monitor, so I guess we'll see. I mean, 1,500 FPS in the, in the loading screen is not bad. I'll take it. Yeah, it's at 20, 12, 1280 by 768. First of all, why is it 5-3 ratio? Sure, let's just go 4K. Still 147 <laughs> FPS in 4K. Okay, but I think everything's still on like low, right? Okay, overall quality's on low. So let's just go ultra. 125 FPS in here. Okay, ultra. Heck yeah. Dude, we could even go higher than ultra if we wanted. I'm back. Oh, geez. I forgot my melee button was. Yep. You can see how bad you are in ultra FPS. <laughs> oh, that's a big O. Oh, I did overclock the graphics card. Okay. It's not a hard crash. Okay, maybe I'll pull back the overclock a little bit. You got his rubber eyeball. Ooh. 
Woo! I would, I mean, here's the thing. If we had this PC like underneath a little like cover and you couldn't see what it was, no one would guess that, the, that it is what it is. Guaranteed. Nobody would be able to be like, wait, this is like a nook? <laughs> well, I mean, it's technically not a nook anymore, but you get the point, right? 3060 Ti was the perfect size because the 4800U is still really good. It, it is, it's not Zen 2 architecture though, which really give that IPC uplift, but uh, we are definitely reaching the CPU bottleneck. So if we had gone with a higher end GPU, like a 3070, 3080 or something like that, although ridiculous, um, it would have bottlenecked quite a bit. All right, so we'll just do some Counter-Strike Go now for the heck of it. Remember, I'm bad. Don't make fun of me. Last time I was at a major disadvantage. <laughs> okay, the resolution is at 1080p because, you know, Counter-Strike. It's all about max FPS. Go with the people, strength in numbers. Look at that FPS though. It's like well over 200, almost 300 at times. Get him, dude. <laughs> Yay, Taco and Jay got him. <laughs> Jay and Taco. Crap. For like the farthest way we can get from the bomb. <laughs> Dancing on the body of, whoa, dead terrorists. Come on, dude. Nice. Crap. It's gonna blow! I tried. The sound. <laughs> <laughs> Him in the head twice. There it is. Oof. Oh. I got AK'd. All right, so considering the fact that we're getting over 200 FPS with this tiny little 4800U, a big old 3060 Ti on there using that little adapter cable. Uh, clearly made things possible. So this is where you guys have to sound off. How do you exit the game? This is where you guys have to sound off and, and give me some ideas on what we should do with this. I feel like this is gonna be the perfect setup for some sort of a, a custom mod where we put a PC in a thing, where it's not so much about the PC, it's about the fact that the thing became a PC. And don't say a boat. That seems, that's like low hanging fruit. Give me some ideas here. But anyway, I'll put a link to these uh, ribbon cables down below if you guys are, are, have a use for those. Remember they are limited pretty much to 4X. Um, and you are going to need an external power supply, obviously, to be able to power it on something like this. But I'm sure you guys can come up with some creative uses for this. Hopefully this isn't one of those videos where we jack up the price of the thing because suddenly we made everyone aware of it. And the company's like, we're selling a ton of these. We should double the price, which seems to happen every time we do one of these stupid videos. But it worked and I'm excited. So thanks for coming along for the ride, guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, don't forget, we have a giveaway. Forgot to tell you guys about that. I tell you about it in every single video. There's a link down below, RTX 3090, plus a CPU, plus a motherboard, plus a power supply, plus RAM, 